Hi, it's Jesse again, and we are going to talk about Fruit Pro Plus procedures and a couple possible pitfalls with thermocouples today. Um, my name is Jesse Anima with Wilson Restaurant Supply. We are a restaurant equipment and supply company and have been in this industry for about 15 years. We are here to help. The goal of this video is to show you different ways you can use a Food Pro Plus thermometer and also some potential pitfalls to using thermocouples. So, how can you use a Food Pro Plus? Well, there are about 12 ways outlined in the Food Pro Plus procedure sheet uh, that you get with your uh, thermometer. One is in the receiving department, another one is in walk ins, reach ins, the grill area, fryer, ovens, dishwasher, um, hot water, hot food workstations, cold food workstations, probe, and held package items. Let's look at these more in depth. In the receiving department, let's use the example of produce receiving. Use infrared to check a case of lettuce. Open a case, lifting the top center head. Shoot the next head quickly with the infrared to determine average travel temperature. If the product is below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, all should be okay. For walk-ins, do an AM check, enter and close the door, shoot the infrared on the boxes and product around the cooler. Record your measurements. Do a PM check. Move stacked boxes one or two to the side and quickly shoot the third box. For shelved product, push aside the front product and shoot for the next. To test air temperature, wave a piece of copy paper in the air three to four times and shoot the paper with the infrared to check the air temperature. Overall, very simple and very fast. Now for reach-ins, uh, coolers and freezers, do an AM check, open the door and shoot the infrared on the foods at once. Do a PM check, always push aside the front products to avoid the immediate temperature change by opening the door. Close the door and shoot the infrared down the door gasket to see if any cold temperatures appear, showing a bad gasket. Try doing that with a dial thermometer. In the grill and fryer area, uh, for the grill, on stainless steel grills, use fry oil or any oil if the grill is stainless steel. Use small puddles of oil all over the grill. Infrared scan each section to get an actual grill surface temperatures. For non-stainless steel grills, if the grill is covered with fat, etc., shoot direct. On char grill, use a skillet totally warmed up and shoot the skillet. For fryers, drop the basket in and out of the oil to agitate the surface oil temperature. Shoot the infrared on the oil inside basket at once to see the actual temperature the food hits the oil. And remember not to burn yourself with the oil. Trust me, it hurts. Oven dishwasher and hot water. Uh, for porcelain ovens, shoot the infrared on the surface. For stainless steel ovens, put a fry pan in the oven. After a warm up, shoot the infrared on the fry pan. For dishwasher, shoot the infrared on anything except stainless steel, coming out of the dishwasher immediately at the end of the cycle. For hot water, run water until hot. Shoot very close from the rear with infrared to avoid any stainless steel. Check high temperature read for the maximum temp. Hot and cold workstations. Hot food workstations, all non-solid foods. Pull food up from one inch below the surface with serving piece and shoot the infrared at once on the food. Close enough so the amber circles inside the temperature reading area. This is one of the secrets with infrared is surface area can be moved to gain accurate infrared temperatures. Cold food workstations. Push the product to the side with the serving piece one inch deep and immediately shoot down close with the infrared. Be sure the amber circle is inside the area one inch deep that is being tempered. For probes and held package items. Probes, push the select button until the probe shows on the screen. Push on the button, the probe will now be flashing, looking for the temperature. Temperature reading happens at the very tip of the probe, so you put the probe in and it immediately gets you the temperature at whatever depth you've uh, inserted the probe. For held package items, creamers, butter cubes, milk, etc., shoot the infrared on the paper label. Always shoot the second or third product back from the front. Now, can you see why this will become your friend? They have a lot of ways you can use them. You can protect yourself, your staff, and your patrons by being proactive and save yourself time and money. So, where can you get these? You can get these at www.wilsonrestaurantsupply.com. You just type in thermometers, or if you're on this page on our website, you can click 
the add to cart button and finish the checkout procedure here as well if you wanted to buy one of the one two three packages so as promised I want to go over possible thermocouple pitfalls now have you ever had your thermocouple need recalibration thermocouple recalibration can cost 120 bucks and it's gone from your facility for a few days to a couple weeks potentially so what if the health inspector shows up during that time or someone gets sick from unproperly tested shipment of food received or stored another thermocouple pitfall is the, the more common models of thermocouples today are only dustproof and splashproof but you can get them in what's called IP67 waterproof meaning they've been held underwater under three feet of water for 30 minutes the price of these is significantly higher around 270 bucks for the kit with the probes for the waterproof uh, version or you could get a PDQ 400 digital pocket thermometer for the IP67 waterproof version to put through a dishwasher and protect it and also protect it from other liquids in the kitchen a PDQ 400 can't do grill temperatures of the grill itself so we suggest the GT 500 K grill thermometer coupled with the PDQ 400 so why go with the PDQ 400 and GT 500 K thermometer versus the more expensive thermocouples one reason price you can get a PDQ 400 and GT 500 K for about thirty nine dollars versus about two hundred and seventy dollars that's about two hundred thirty one dollars in savings so that's all for today thanks for watching I hope you learned something check your email tomorrow for a video on the difference between the PDT 300 and the PDQ 400 digital thermometers it will be quick and fun see you then